AC Circuits Practical 1.2. You're with Dr. Ken. And this is going to be all about how we use and read oscilloscopes. In this particular case, we're using digital oscilloscopes and you can see a copy or a picture of one just above us there in the top left-hand corner. So the task here, there's two of them, is to practice interpreting a digital oscilloscope and to measure frequency voltage and on a sine and a square wave. So digital oscilloscopes a refresher. Remember it's just a flash voltmeter and I'll explain what I mean. Just get my little pen drawing thing up here. If you remember the horizontal scale in this direction, anything in this direction is time. Simple as that, time. Anything in this direction, and I'm drawing two separate arrows for a reason, this is volts. And quite often we have a center position in the middle of our screen. It doesn't have to be in the middle of the screen, but often it is. And we've got plus volts in this direction and minus volts in this direction. So it's a flash voltmeter that can measure voltage over time. So that's basically what our screen does. It is a graph of voltage over time. And with most uh, oscilloscopes, you have two voltage inputs. So instead of having a thing like a multimeter that only measures one channel of voltage, on an oscilloscope, we normally have at least two, and some you can get four, five, or six channels. But typically, we have channel one and channel two. And in this particular case, they're represented by the colors yellow and a purpley pink. If you look at the way the control knobs are set up, you'll see this little area here and these control the voltages or the voltage scale. They don't control the voltage itself, just the scale of the voltage. And this does the voltage for channel 1. This does the voltage for channel 2. And you'll see that the display is normally broken up into what we call divisions. Now when the divisions are marked vertically, the display will tell us that there are so many volts per division. So as you turn this knob, this way or that way, you can change how many volts each of these little divisions represents. And that's it for voltage, very easy. Uh, before we go, we should also say you can you know, select just one channel on, or just number two on, or you press them both in, you get both displayed at the same time. So now let's look at the horizontal scale, and that's this box over here. And this one is measuring time. As with our voltage knobs, if you turn this knob to the right or to the left, it will change the volts per division horizontally. So again, I'm just drawing them in here very roughly so you can see the divisions. So that pot knob represents how much time is represented by a particular division. So you might have something in the order of maybe two milliseconds per division. There we 
we go, per division. And that's all it is. It's just a flash voltmeter, a flash voltmeter that can measure voltage in a positive direction or in a negative direction, and it's doing it against time. So this yellow sine wave we can see here, you can see the shape of the wave. We can measure its voltage from the top to the bottom by using the scale and multiplying by the appropriate value. We can measure its time from where it crosses the zero point here to where it crosses the zero point again. And again, we just measure how many divisions that might be, and that will tell us the time. So we end up with time in this direction, and we end up with volts in this direction. So don't need to be scared of a digital oscilloscope. It's simply a flash voltmeter measuring two channels at the same time so we can see two things happening together and plus and minus voltages are displayed and they're simply displayed against time. So for our prac, here's our, uh, here's our little setup. And again, I'll just change my pointer arrow to a pen. And uh, our setup is a function generator. That's this gadget. And an oscilloscope. So here's my function generator. My function generator has an output. And I've simply connected it with a coax cable into channel 1 on my oscilloscope. So that's channel 1 on my particular oscilloscope. And you can see the controls here for the voltage, just like any other oscilloscope. So voltage for channel 1, voltage for channel 2. On my oscilloscope, time is actually managed up here. So that's time, the time base. So let's come back to our function generator. We have an output. Here, going to my input on my oscilloscope. I can change the wave shape. You can see I've got three wave shapes to choose from on this oscilloscope. I've got a sine wave, a triangular wave, and a square wave. Then over here, I've got a whole range of frequencies. whole heap of frequencies and then once I select a particular range let's say there's the 100 Hertz range and I move my potentiometer here that's all it is I can move it backwards and forwards I've got a little mark here that registers where it is and if I put that on a number one on my 100 Hertz scale I should output something close to 100 Hertz. Now you'll notice our sine wave, we can measure the time and the voltage, but we'll get to that in a minute. Our function generator also allows us to control the output level, or what's sometimes called the amplitude. So I can control the voltage out with that amplitude knob and I can control the overall frequency or period this one with this knob so that's all we're doing there's nothing super fantastic about it the function generator is just a great little tool that allows us to create some different wave shapes at different frequencies. We're going to display them on our oscilloscope and again just practice 
how to read and interpret what we see on our oscilloscope. So again, just to give you a even closer look at my function generator, there's my output. You can see it there at 50 ohms. I've selected sine wave because we're going to use sine wave for most of this experiment. I've got my amplitude set on a particular voltage, which we will see before too long. And it's hard to tell which buttons press down, but at the moment I've got the 100 hertz button pressed down, and my pot knob is reading on a scale number one. So I should be getting somewhere around about 100 hertz out of my oscilloscope, or on my oscilloscope, but out of my function generator. So before we go on, we go do a little bit of a risk assessment. We've always got to uh, consider what the risks are around doing any of these things. This is the kind of thing we have to do. So we're working with LV. So the equipment we've got plugged in is 240 volts. We're working with LV. The uh, supervision level will be moderate, and the risk is also moderate, but the way we control that risk is to ensure that our equipment has been tagged and tested. We'll also be working with extra low voltage, so there is the possibility again of maybe low level shocks or burns. Um, supervision will be close, and but the risk is low because there is current limiting on the equipment. The equipment can't produce any more than a couple of milliamps of signal, so there's not much chance of us getting a shock or a burn. Of course, we'll be working in groups, so trip hazards, leads, furniture, that kind of thing need to be taken into account. So again, close supervision, low risk. So we work in distinct and well-separated groups, and when we finish, we'll put all our equipment away. So no one's tripping over leads and things of the like. So wave shape characteristic reminder. So here... We have a sine wave, uh, it's the obviously the green wave, and again this is just to remind you of the characteristics of a wave, whether it's a sine wave, a square wave, or maybe even a triangular wave. So let's look at the voltages first. There are two voltages that we need to remember. The first one is our peak to peak voltage and that's measured from the very top of the wave in its positive direction to the very bottom of the wave in its negative direction. So that's the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, and we often write that one just volts peak-p subscript, so we know it's volts peak-to-peak. -peak. The next one is uh, volts maximum, so we have a volts maximum plus, and we also have a volts maximum minus. So again, we express this as just V max. V max. And last but not least, we have instantaneous values of voltage happening continually across the curve and here it's represented by the orange so there's an instantaneous value here there's an instantaneous value there there's an infinite number of instantaneous values all the way along the curve but these values here are what we call our instantaneous values So our sine wave is constantly changing voltage in the positive direction, coming back down to zero, changing its voltage in the negative direction, and then coming back to zero. And it's doing this over time. So there's two ways to measure the horizontal. On this particular uh, little graph, we've measured it in degrees rather than in time. 
So we've said this is zero degrees. Halfway through the wave, where it crosses the zero, is 180 and 360 at the end. So our maximum positive occurs at 90 degrees and our maximum voltage negative occurs at 270. We can also find out what the instantaneous value or angles are here as well. But on our oscilloscope, basically we'll be measuring this distance here. We'll be measuring in some form of time. And it's often well less than a second, so we're often measuring in milliseconds. Or maybe even microseconds. And then finally, because it's constantly changing its shape, we have an RMS value that we use, which is the effective DC value. So once we have the volts max, we can work out the volts RMS, but this is the effective DC value. So that's just a quick revision and reminder about shapes of sine waves and the way that we describe any wave shape, whether it be a sine wave or not. I chose to use a sine wave for the example. Remembering where peak to peak is measured, where volts max is measured, where time or period is measured. That's what this is. I better put that there. My eye. So this is the period. Okay, let's move on. So we're going to complete this little table by looking at some waveforms. I've selected four frequencies of 1 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, and 100 kilohertz. And we're going to read off the time um, division on the oscilloscope, the width of the waveform in divisions, and then the measured period of the time, and then work out what the frequency is. Then we're going to look at the volts per division, how many volts, or how many divisions high the waveform is, and how many volts it is peak to peak. So this is what the whole exercise is about. It's about uh, reading off the data on the oscilloscope and then filling in this table as we go along. So I'll just go through that again. Our frequency is down the left-hand side. The blue area is our period and our frequency. So the first column, our time or time divisions on the oscilloscope. The width of the waveform in divisions. How many divisions make up the period? So that'll be the time multiplied by the number of the number of divisions, and then we will invert it one on t to get the frequency. The voltage similarly, but we're measuring in the vertical now. So the volts per division on the scope the height of the waveform in divisions, and then we'll multiply those two things together and get our volts peak to peak. So here's the first one. I've set the oscilloscope up for one kilohertz. You can see I'm on the sine wave. I'm on the one kilohertz scale, and my potentiometer is at one. If we look at our oscilloscope, our vertical divisions are at 5 volts a division. I've just rewritten that there, 5 volts, so it's really clear. And our speed is at 80 microseconds. So we've got 80 microseconds per division, so each of these little squares horizontally represents 80 milliseconds, but vertically they represent 5 volts. So as you can see here, if we were to count up one, two, three, four, five, maybe a fraction over five vertically, and from crossover to crossover, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
uh, maybe 12.2 or 12.3. So we're reading our oscilloscope. We're simply counting up the number of divisions vertically and the number of divisions horizontally. So I've done the first one for you. So we've got 80 microseconds. We've got 12 and a half divisions. So we multiply 80 by 12 and a half and we end up with so close to one millisecond, it doesn't matter. And if you put one on 1000, you'll get a thousand hertz. So we have a frequency of a thousand hertz, which is where we set our signal generator. Our voltage was 5 volts per division. I estimated it at about 5.2 divisions. So we multiply 5 by 5.2 and we get 26 volts. Nice and easy. Now, the idea here is that uh, you pause the video. And uh, while the video is paused, you actually count up the divisions. So again, we're still on sine wave, we're on 10 kilohertz this time. Our oscilloscope is still displaying 80 microseconds per horizontal division and 5 volts per vertical division. So you scale off from the picture the number of vertical divisions and the number of horizontal divisions and fill out the table in your workbook and see if you come up with a similar number. Well, maybe it won't be exactly the same because we're, we're scaling off on an estimate on the front of the oscilloscope and see how you go. Okay, I'm back again now. So let's continue. Uh, I said 80 milliseconds. I reckon there's about 2.4 um, divisions for that and came out at about 0.18 milliseconds when I inverted that went on T I got about 5208 Hertz so if you got something around about 5000 that's cool this time I reckon there was about 5.3 divisions on the vertical, multiplied by 5 gave me 26.5 volts. So I hope you got something relatively close or similar to mine. So here's our next one. We're now set to uh, 10 kilohertz. And again, 5 volts of division. But you'll notice our scale on the horizontal has changed. We're now at 20 microseconds per division. So again, count up the number of divisions from where it crosses to the period of the wave. So from the start of the wave to the start of the next wave. Make sure you go start to start. Count up the number of divisions horizontally. Count up the number of divisions vertically. We're going to multiply the horizontal ones by 20 microseconds. We're going to multiply the voltage by 5. So again, I you pause your video here, and then I'll continue with my estimate. Well, I hope you're back and that went well. So, did you get something similar to mine? I thought there was something in the order of 20 micro... Sorry, the microseconds was 10 to 20 microseconds, the time per division on the scope. The width of the waveform in divisions was 4.8 in my estimation. So 4.8 times 20 gave us about um, 96 microseconds. And if you inverted that, you would have got about 10,416 hertz, which is pretty close to our 10 hertz. And our voltage didn't change. It was about 5 volts multiplied by 5.2, giving us about 26 volts. Now for our, our final one, well our final one for a sine wave, we're going to change wave shape just for one in a moment. So 
You'll notice now we're on two microseconds per division scale horizontally. The five volts vertically hasn't changed. So again, I'll pause. Suggest that you pause the video here, and then when you come back and run it, I'll go through with you again. Okay, Dr. Ken, back again. Hopefully you've uh, worked out how many divisions for the vertical and the horizontal. And I said two microseconds per division on the scope. There were five divisions that made up the wave shape. So that made 10 microseconds. And if you invert 10 microseconds, you get 100 so you get a hundred kilohertz. So our voltages at about five stayed the same. Our, our last one, nice and simple. Again, you'll see, you'll notice that I've changed the uh, function generator to a square wave. I've blocked out the, uh, the frequency so you can't just read the frequency off. We're on two microseconds of division. We're still on five volts for the vertical voltage. So horizontal time is in two microseconds per division. Vertical voltage is in five volts per division. Again, pause the video scale off what you think the value should be and then we'll continue. Well, time to continue. And I said two microseconds per division. I reckon there was about 4.8 of those to make up one square wave, giving us 9.6 giving me about 104,166 hertz. Our voltage, 5 volts per division. I think the height was something in the order of about 5.8 divisions. So 5 times 5.8 gave us 29 volts. So the voltage changed a little bit. We squeezed the voltage up just to see if you would notice that we changed the voltage. So there we have our first prac all done uh, using this nice simple video. I hope you've enjoyed um, AC prac 1.2.